Spinal degeneration is terrifying. Look at these two x-rays. The first is a totally healthy, normal adult spine, and the second has tons of degeneration, and there's no way that you need to be able to know how to properly read an x-ray, which, by the way, is incredibly complicated and takes at least four years of schooling to figure out, to understand that. This degenerated spine and person must have tons of pain and may even be disabled as a result of it right? In this video, we'll be talking about why spinal degeneration is such a scary thing, and we'll also be breaking down some all too common misconceptions that seriously need to be put to rest for good. As always, we need to start with the anatomy. As you likely know, our spine is many vertebrae stacked on top of each other, separated by spinal discs consisting of connective tissue. Spinal degeneration specifically refers to the degenerative processes that may occur within our spinal column. This degeneration process is not unique to our spine. In fact, we'd actually anticipate every bone within our body experiencing at least some degree of degeneration as we age. Spinal degeneration can take the form of degenerative disc disease, degenerative joint disease or osteophytic changes, which are more commonly known as bone spurs. And these changes can all be visualized on medical imaging. On first look of comparing a degenerated spine to a normal healthy spine, the comparison can be quite alarming, especially when the degenerated spine is your own. It can be very, very easy to jump the gun and assume that this visualized degeneration is the source of every pain, ache, or discomfort that you feel. As well, there are some very professional looking diagrams out there that nicely break down the stages of spinal degeneration right next to all of the potential side effects that come with it. These side effects listed can be quite extreme, all the way up to untimely death. Call me crazy, but I consider most death to be untimely. So we've established exactly what spinal degeneration is and how it can seem scary. But is it actually something to be scared of? Let's do that thing that all healthcare providers should be doing and examine the evidence. Today we're going to be looking at three studies, and the first of which was published in the European Spine Journal in 2014. This study examines the prevalence, or how common, spinal degeneration is within asymptomatic, meaning no pain, individuals. And it found that spinal degeneration was common across all age groups, again, none of which reported pain. The amounts ranged from 37% of all examined 20 year olds, all the up to 96% of examined 80 year olds for some degree of spinal degeneration. And again, none of these patients had any kind of discomforts or pain. The authors concluded that the imaging based degenerative features were likely more to do with age rather than any kind of underlying condition and that they're unassociated with pain. Now, fun fact about my own spine, I had an x-ray taken about five-ish years ago, just incidentally, and I was found to have degenerative disc disease. This was an incidental finding, it had nothing to do with the actual reason for which I was getting an x-ray. And for the record, I do not have any kind of disc pain, but I would fall in the category of one of the 20-year-old groups with spinal degeneration. But hey, no pain! Our second study, published in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery in 2006, examined the correlation between patient MRI spinal degenerative changes and the individual patient's condition, namely their pain and disability levels. This study specifically focused in on patients with confirmed clinical lumbar stenosis and compared those patients to asymptomatic individuals or individuals with just mechanical low back pain. Two quick notes, number one, mechanical refers to musculoskeletal, meaning that your back pain is being caused due to some either muscular or skeletal issue, as well clinical lumbar stenosis refers to the narrowing of the spinal canal itself, causing pain in our lumbar nerves. Remember that our spinal canal hosts our spinal cord and all of our nerves come off of that. Now, upon examining the MRI readings, it was actually found that it was not possible to differentiate between symptomatic and asymptomatic individuals any better than random chance. This means that despite any degenerative changes within any of the groups, it's still not possible to determine which ones were most affected or in pain or disabled. The authors concluded that imaging alone is insufficient to base a degenerative-based diagnosis on. This emphasizes the importance of the physical examination and how all imaging must be correlated with the individual's patient presentation. And as another personal example here, I have obviously sent many patients for x-rays 
whenever it's needed. More often than not, I do see degeneration within my patient's spines. However, I'll never forget that my most affected patient actually had very, very minimal degeneration, but it was in exactly the right or wrong, depending on how you're looking at it, spot. I'll put an x-ray up of lateral stenosis here. As you compare this to a degenerative spine, there's actually not that much degeneration, but this is the exact thing that my patient had and had significant levels of pain and disability. That's a testament to the very little correlation of imaging findings in patient presentation once again. The final study to consider for today was once again in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery and was published all the way back in 1990. That kind of points to how the whole mindset around this has been changing for quite a while now, but for some reason some people still haven't adopted it. MRI imaging was taken of 67 patients who had never experienced low back pain before. These images were then given to neuroradiologists who were blind to the patient condition, meaning that they didn't know exactly what was wrong with the patient upon looking at them, if anything. For the record, this is referred to as a blind study and done quite frequently in research. Radiologists found bulging discs in 35% of the 20 to 39 year old group. And they also found bulging discs in all but one individual within the 60 to 80 year old group. As once again, none of these patients had ever had any reported history of back pain, the authors concluded that imaging alone is insufficient to base a diagnosis on, and that present degeneration is not necessarily associated with pain or disability. These three studies kind of very nicely sum up the current modern day and medical based thinking around spinal degeneration. First, the presence of spinal degeneration does not mean that the patient is experiencing any form of pain or discomfort. Second, a patient who is experiencing pain or discomfort and has spinal degeneration is not necessarily experiencing that pain or discomfort as a result of the degeneration. It's entirely possible that their condition is being caused by some underlying cause. It could potentially be related to core stiffness, which is the most common thing that I see in my clinic, which by the way, you can watch the video on that up there. And finally, that a majority of the population can expect to get some degree of degeneration within their spine during their lifetime. This is very normal and very associated with aging. In conclusion, spinal degeneration is scary because it is poorly understood by the general population. And in some cases of either predatory or ignorant practitioners, that naivety of the patient can be taken advantage of. Okay, now the symptoms you describe point to bonus eruptus. It's a terrible disorder where the skeleton tries to leap out the mouth and escape the body. No, you're talking. If you want to learn more about how to protect yourself from these tactics and individuals, please click the link up there. I made a video about it. You are more likely than not to have spinal degeneration at some point in your life. I am a very healthy late 20 year old. I have degeneration this disease, I'm completely fine. For the patients of mine who also have degenerative disc disease, who are much older than myself, they are proof that it is very possible to live a very full and fulfilling life with this serious spinal degeneration. And as far as the original diagram goes with untimely death listed as a possible side effect, that seems like an incredibly far-fetched and straight up false claim. If you have had an x-ray taken and the practitioner tells you that significant spinal degeneration is the causative aspect aspect of your current condition, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you seek a second opinion from another healthcare provider whom you trust. While it is entirely possible that your spinal degeneration is functioning as a pain generator, it's also just as possible that it is not. Getting a second confirming opinion can help to protect yourself from practitioners who either may not have your best interests or the medical consensus to heart. Thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, if you have a spare three seconds, please subscribe down below. It helps me to afford gas for my car. You can click here for the previous video or you can click here for the most recent one. Have yourselves fantastic days.